Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. This is the place where we take a no bullshit look at life's little lessons. Here, together, we find the spiritual glory in even the most wicked hard story. This is a journey from fear back to love and how we can find our greatest strength and happiness in some of the most unlikely places. I believe that if you're willing to change your mind, you can totally change your life. So, are you ready to rewrite your story and choose to live free? Let's do this. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I am just so excited to be here. So, you guys, you know how at the beginning of like TV shows or stuff on the radio, they'd be like, this episode is brought to you by Clorox or like whatever. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by, I feel like I should do that sometimes with my show, not because I have advertisers, but because sometimes my show is coming to you courtesy of something that somebody did or said or experience I had. And so I, and, it, and I'm just like, oh, this is where the inspiration for this came from. So this episode comes to you uh, sponsored by something that my friend and writing coach, uh, Sarah Lovett, uh, said to me the other day. <laughs> so let me explain. Let me dive a little deeper into the comment. I'll tell you first what she said to me. I will give you the content and then I will explain to you the context of what she meant and what we were talking about. So today's episode is titled Putting down your pom-poms. <laughs> Putting down your pom-poms. And let me explain to you where this came from. So Sarah and I were talking. So those of you who are in the know, if you've been listening to this show, you know that I am writing a memoir. I am writing a book, right? And so um, it's like, I'm trying to just get this first draft done. And the first draft is just like, it, it's what, it's what, um, Joshua Moore calls the danger draft, right? It's just like, get it down hot, get it down fast. Like just do what you got to do, say what you got to say, get that sucker down on paper. So I've been working diligently on this, you know, especially uh, this past year. And so my goal is to try and hopefully, fingers crossed, get the first draft as done as possible or finish it by the end of uh, this year of 2021. And so Sarah is kind of like my accountability helper. And so um, she tries to keep me, helps me. I shouldn't say she, it's not her job to keep me on track, but she encourages me. She cheerleads me, right? To help me to try and stay on track of keeping uh, my word to myself and getting, getting these pages in. And we were having a talk the other day on one of my sessions. We were, uh, I had submitted my pages, um, you know, again, accountability. And we were kind of talking about that. And um, I was probably talking to her about, you know, being in the nest and running the nest and one-to-one -one clients and my sweetie and like all this stuff in, in the world. And she just said to me something like, she basically just said, it's time to put your pom-poms away. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's me always like, what? She's like, and, and I was like, you're telling me to put my pom-poms down? Put down my pom-poms, right? And I could just feel myself going like, oh God, right? And the funniest thing is, let me now that's the content. That's what she said to me. Let me kind of put it in context. So she is not the first person in my life to tell me that I tend to put other people, their needs and stuff like that first. I often joke about my enthusiasm for cheerleading other people, right? Hence the pom-pom reference. My, my, I, I delight in it. I love it, you guys. I mean, I genuinely do. But we can't ignore the fact that some part of that behavior, I think it was always in there, right? I think I was just, a, I was uh, a genuinely enthusiastic kid. I love doing love shout outs. I love acknowledging other people's brilliance. I love like, you know, I just love spreading the love and the good word, people. That's just me, right? But I think also part of that, part of that got into my DNA because of trauma. Let me explain just a little bit. We're not going to go all into KK's trauma and my whole childhood and all that. But I will say this. 
when I look back at my life and I'm telling you this, I don't tell you these stories just to talk about myself. I tell you these things so that perhaps you might recognize some of it somewhere along the line on one of these episodes, you might recognize yourself too. And you might be like, holy shit, KK, that's me. She's describing me. I do this too. My hope is always that it might be helpful in some way. So because I am a chronic helper, like that's my point about the trauma thing. So one of the things that happens, and I'm not speaking for everybody, I can only speak for myself. But one of the things that happened for me is, and I wasn't, let me be clear, I was not conscious of this. I was not aware of this. It was not something where I was diabolically planning it, but some part of my uh, reptilian brain of survival instinct, right? Of like, how do I stay alive on this planet? Figured out really early that if I could be helpful to others, they might need me or want to keep me around or see value in me or see worth in me. They might come to love me. I mean, fill in the blank, whatever my brain was thinking back then. And so what ends up happening to people like that, people like me, so you know when they talk about um, how the nervous system responds to stress and fear and trauma, whatever, and they talk about fight and flight, right? The, um, the sympathetic nervous system. And, you know, so, but there's more to that. There's fight and flight and freeze and fawn. Fawn is the one that in my earliest years, my younger years, where it's really how I responded to that is where you kind of like, I think of it like this, you befriend the attacker, like you befriend, you know, they talk about Stockholm syndrome, where the, you, you, you start to become friendly with the kidnapper. I kind of think about like that. And what you do is you kind of like go along to get along. You try to be helpful. You become, here's the word, the PP word, not just pom-poms. What, what other word it has two P's in it, right? Or it starts in it, people pleaser. Any professional other people pleases here? I don't do it so much anymore. These days, right, as 53, I just turned 53 on October 4th, 10-4, good buddy. So this is my birthday week. I get wicked excited still. I don't care how old I am. I will always love my birthday. <laughs> so, right, I don't do it so much now as an adult. Um, but um, back then, in my younger years, I did. I, I kind of like, you know, I call it Cirque du Soleil. I Cirque du Soleil myself. I twisted and contorted myself into being... Uh, what's the word I would use? Uh, I twisted and contorted myself to be a version of whoever I was around so that they would keep me around. So that they might, like I said before, love me or find me valuable or think that I'm worthy. And, 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 and if I could just help enough, if I could just be a helper, then maybe I'd get loved. Now, again, remember, this was not like in the forefront of my brain, me going like, yeah, this is what I need to do. It's not like I planned it out. But these, these were behaviors that became programmed and conditioned into me, indoctrinated into me in order to stay alive. And, and we don't need to go into all the backstory and why that is. It's just like, if you recognize any of that, that you too became the, the good one or the helpful one or the one that nobody had to worry about or the one who was really independent because maybe there was another sibling who needed more attention or maybe you had a sibling who was sick or maybe one of your parents had cancer or maybe your dad was an alcoholic or like whatever the story is. Right. A lot of times kids who end up becoming people, pleasers, cheerleaders, helpers, good ones, the ones where you get rewarded for not needing anything. Oh, boy. Did that land for anybody? The ones who got rewarded for being so independent and not needing anything. Right. So one of the things that that happens is you become a people pleaser, you become a helper, you become uh, call it easy to be around or whatever. And then you get rewarded for that. And then somewhere in your conditioning, it starts to go like, oh yeah, like I see how this works now. So the way that it manifested in my life is I became really good at cheerleading other people, at building other people up, celebrating other people, loving other people, pep talking other people. And I remember like, even when I went into high school, I remember I had been an athlete, like my whole life. Uh, I played, I played softball from the time I was like five. And I was even like doing shit before that, but officially like joined a team, I think when I was like five and we didn't call things, I think back then like peewee league or whatever, but um, like, or 
it wasn't t-ball like we there was no t-ball when i was a kid p.s like i think we just started they would toss us a ball and try to hit it kid you know what i mean but i, I played i was an athlete like my whole life but when i went into high school all of a sudden it became really interesting to me to maybe become a cheerleader now maybe it's because my sister uh, my sister was 18 months older than me, but she went to a different high school, but she became a cheerleader. So maybe it had something to do with that. But again, if it was, I was not conscious of it. Uh, so I went out for cheerleading, much to the chagrin of the field hockey coach uh, who really wanted me and my athleticism or whatever on her team. <laughs> maybe it was just like my my tough attitude that she wanted on the team. Uh, give me in a stick and it would have been interesting, right? Um, but I became a cheerleader uh, and I was like, I always say, and I jokingly say it because like who really gives a shit, but I was like the first one of the first freshmen to ever make like varsity cheerleading. And then my senior year, when I became captain, all the other years up until that point that had always been two girls as captains, but my year, they were just like, no, <laughs> just let KK do it right Two, maybe it's because I had too big of a personality or I was too bossy or whatever. They didn't need a second one. It just makes me laugh now when I think about it, but I literally became captain of the cheerleaders and I dated, right. I tend to date. Like when I, when I look back through my dating history, uh, I mean, I'm married now. I've been married for like, oh my God, like almost 12 years. Um, so, when, but when I look back, um, like the people that I dated, they all tended to be incredibly talented. They tended to be the kind of people that were like in the spotlight or got a lot of attention. Hello, I literally married a rock star, right? Somebody who is on stage for a living, right? So we can still see that pattern. But with my sweetie, it's like, it's healthy, it's good. Um, but I ended up dating like in high school, I'll never forget, like my boyfriend at the time in high school, we dated for like three years. And he was like, voted, I don't know what, he was voted like everything, right? He was like uh, best, best, I don't know if he got best athlete, but like most popular or most attractive or whatever, but he was like a three letter sportsman, you know, big name in like in, in, in Lawrence, like everybody knew the family, that type of a thing. Um, and he was a very incredibly gifted athlete, um, especially in baseball. In fact, I have no doubt he could have and should have played professional baseball, uh, but his mind would get in the way, right? That's all I'm going to say about it. He would take himself out of the knees because of his, his mental talk, right? And uh, that would often get in his way. So I was conditioned from a very young age, right? I mean, I was already doing the people pleasing, like whatever thing, and then get a boyfriend who um, needed support, needed emotional support and bolstering, even though the kid was like unbelievable on and off the field. I mean, you know, on the field, come off the field and some of that, um, that insecurity would start to show. And so I was excellent at pep talks, holding them up, bolstering up. And so it became a history and a pattern in my life. And, and maybe some of you out there can recognize this pattern in yourself too, is that you get attracted to the bright lights. You get really attracted to the bright lights, the talented people, the gifted people, whatever, the artists, the creatives. And, and I was a creative too, but I was always attracted to people who were actually doing it, actually shining, right? And so, and it's not like I was a wallflower, right? Like again, captain of the cheerleaders, I was voted most popular in high school, da, 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 da. But my external world was a little bit different than what I was um, maybe feeling or thinking inside sometimes. But on the outside, it looked a very particular way. Um, but I saw this pattern continue in my life where I would put other people's needs first. I would, I would cheerlead other people to the point where I would sacrifice myself. Which brings us back to what Sarah said to me. It's time to put your pom-poms down. Put your pom-poms away, KK. <laughs> because she knows right now that I am trying to get this book done. Which means I should, as my sweetie so often reminds me, you know, he said to me, he has said to me several times, but it be really, really probably in the past eight months, it's become loud and clear what he has said to me. You know, you have always, always cheerleaded others. It is time for you to become your own best cheerleader. It is time for you to focus on getting this book done, putting yourself in that numero uno position. And I remember when I was a little kid, something that my stepfather always used to say, he'd always say to me, look out for number one kid. You got to look out for number one. And I don't know if some part of me always saw that or thought of that as selfish or 
um, I don't know, a bristle just rubbed me the wrong way. And I thought like, oh, I don't want to be like that. That sounds so selfish, right? Like, I don't know. I think in balance, the guy had a point. I think sometimes it is so important. And there's a reason why we're not going to go into all the, uh, you know, they say, put your, put your own oxygen mask on first when you're on a plane, right? Cause you can't assist other people if you can't find and breathe, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't give from an empty well, because what happens is if it gets out of balance, the helpers end up becoming sick. The givers end up becoming overwhelmed or resentful, right? Then they have that secret rage that is just churning inside because they're not going to turn it on other people because that's not what nice people, quote unquote, nice people or helpers do. So they turn it on themselves. So they become madas or they become passive aggressive or they literally physically become ill because their rage, they turn their rage on themselves, right? That's a whole other episode for another day. But so if we're not actually in a balanced place and as a Libra, right? Like I, the justice scales, like I was born under the sign of Libra, right? That, that whole thing of balancing the scales about justice and things being just and equal and fair and measured and all that stuff, you know, when that, those things go out of balance, you will definitely pay the price. You will self-sacrifice because that's a lot of times what, what givers do, you know? If you're always a giver, who do you think you're going to attract? The takers are like, yeah, we love that shit. Like, sign me up. Like, I'm on board. You know what I mean? So if we don't learn to give ourselves some of that goodness, put some of that self-love back in the mix, putting our attention on the things that we're here to do. And that was one of the patterns that I saw in my younger life is that I would, I would, I would date really talented people musicians, athletes, artists, right, right, whatever it was, sign language interpreters, uh, performers. And I would just like be in the audience, clapping the loudest, biggest fan. And at some point, my sweetie said to me, uh, it's time for you to get the attention. It's time for you to quote unquote, get on stage. It's time for you because he, I mean, cause he's, I mean, he's my sweetie. <laughs> he's so sweet, but he really, really, really believes in this book. And so does, so does Sarah. Um, and this is wicked important to note. So do I. And so they have both been encouraging me. And, uh, it's so funny because, um, a few years ago I joined my first ever business coaching program. It was a two year program. Um, and at the end of the first year, like I really committed to this thing. And I was like, it, it was like a year long program. I may have mentioned this before on the thing. Uh, it was called the big shift, the big shift coaching program. And um, we had calls every week. Plus we had individual calls with our own coaches. And we often had multiple calls a week. So think about that over like, however, we probably took breaks during Christmas or whatever. So we're talking like maybe 48 weeks out of the year or 49 weeks or 50 weeks or whatever it was over the year. You guys, when I say I only missed like two phone calls that whole year, like I was in, like I was committed. I was in it, but not only was I in it for me, like I was in the group and I was like, you know, pouring love into people and celebrating people and cheering them up when they weren't getting results and da, 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 da. So that I literally, I'm not even making this up. I literally just a few years ago got an award. <laughs> I got, do you know what award I got in the group? You guys, I got the best cheerleader award. And when I got that, if you can see me right now, I'm just like, oh, like face planting my head in my hand. Like, of course I did. Of course I did because that's what I really know how to do. And I remember when I would teach, you know, weekly yoga classes, you know, I've been a yoga teacher for over 20 years. I had a studio for 10 years, but I've been teaching, right? Like for like so long. Um, and one of the things I always used to say to my students is don't be stingy. Well, I'd say, don't be stingy with your breath. Right. But I would always say, don't be stingy with your love. Don't withhold your love. Don't be stingy with your love. So I want to be really clear when I say putting down your pom-poms, I'm not saying you put them away forever. I'm not saying you retire them and you never like, are, you're never a balcony person for other people again, or that you don't cheer and support people. In fact, what made me fucking crack up is right before I started record, 
I was like, oh, because I had seen online, I had seen on Facebook that one of my friends, Susie, was celebrating her year anniversary. Um, she does Thai yoga massage, Thai yoga body work. She's also a yoga teacher. Um, and so she was celebrating her one year anniversary of opening up her business. And so even before I hit record on this, I was like, oh, before I forget, I have to go on Facebook and share it. <laughs> I, ha I have to go on Facebook and share it. Because I love doing love shout outs and I love supporting my friends and I love cheerleading my friends, you know, and that's one of my biggest things. Like I, I remember saying to a friend uh, a couple of months ago, um, I said, the most important thing to me is, is like that my friends know that I love them. And I said to her, you know that I love you, right? And she was like, oh my God. She's like, how could I not? She's like, yes, of course. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is it's about this balanced measure, right? It's not about like when I say I'm getting ready to put down my pom poms so that I can really focus on my book. It's not like I'm going to become all of a sudden a totally self-centered, selfish asshole. It's not like I'm going to all of a sudden shut off the faucet of like love and kindness and giving and stuff like that. But it is that I have to kind of turn my attention away sometimes. Because one of the things that social media has done, you guys, is it's made us hyper aware of everything else that everybody else is doing, which in some, like some people love that, right? But I think for most of us, it is now I'm, well, two things, right? Let's just, let me just eh, little eh, digress a little bit for a second here. One of the things that happens with that is for a lot of people, they get caught up in comparisonitis, right? That's where a lot of that um, imposter syndrome, and I did a whole episode on that. You can go check that sucker out. But this is where a lot of that stuff comes from, right? You start seeing what everybody else everywhere is doing because everybody's posting about you know, their highlight reels and what they're up to and what's happening. And so I think it's, it's, it's uh, in some ways too much. I don't know what the exact number is, but I know that there was a study done that said something like humans really only have the capacity to invest in a certain number, the emotional capacity, the bandwidth, right? To be able to be in like deep, intimate relationships with a certain number of people, because otherwise it's too much. And I think what, you know, what Facebook is, has done or, or Instagram has done and these different things have done especially the ones that tell you every day when it's all like, I, I laugh, like, you know, if I go online and all of a sudden it's like 15 of my friends have birthdays today. And I'm like, oh my God, Jesus Christ. Because it's really hard for me as somebody who loves birthdays to not wish somebody a happy birthday. And there have been some days like, well, some days I don't even see it. And then you go on and it will tell you whose birthdays it is today. And then they'll say, this is whose birthdays it was yesterday. And well, here are the birthdays that are coming up. And I'm just like, oh my God, put on my blinders. No, 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 no. Because I will spend a lot of time like going to everybody. Oh, happy birthday, Susan. I hope you have an amazing day. Ba, 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 ba. Because it is part of my, my generous, like my, my hat, you know, like I, I'm not saying I'm special, you guys. It's just the way I'm wired. It makes me so happy to wish people a happy birthday and to do those things. But if I'm spending so much time commenting, liking, supporting, bolstering, sharing, shouting out, doing all this stuff for everybody else all the time. My work doesn't get done. My shit that I came here to do doesn't get done. Again, I have been mandated. It is my dharma. It is my ministry to be a helper, to be in service to others. But one of the ways I'm doing that in, in a way that can serve so many more people than I could possibly do just by like having the nest or whatever is to get this damn book done. And so, you know, again, with the encouragement, when I was telling Sarah the other day, like, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I got the nest, I'm launching this right now, I'm doing that. And I said, and I was, you know, it was just talking and she's like, okay, look, she's like, I know, obviously you're, you're going to serve the people who have paid you, <laughs> right? Like that's the arrangement. That's the deal. You give us your money. This is the thing. Hello, service providers. You give us money. We show up and we give you the thing that we said we would give you, whether it's a product, a service or whatever. She's like, of course you're going to do that, but we need to rein in some of the other stuff. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's just my natural inclination. 
but I'm taking it very seriously. And this is how seriously I am taking the putting down your pom poms. So one of the things that I do, uh, one of the things that I do is um, I'm always, I'm, I am an eternal student, but what I mean by that is, it's not like when I say that, it means I run out and buy every course like known to man. I don't mean it like that but I will always be somebody who loves to keep my mind open, who loves expansion, who loves to expand my mind. And one of the great things about, um, this just is about Sadan San, so arrogant. One of the great things about people being in the nest is, but I don't mean it like that. Hear me out. Here, let me explain. Put it, let me put it in context. But one of the great things about being in the nest though, is this, um, you're not just going to get like the stuff that I'm already providing, the modules and the coaching and the guest teachers and all that shit. But I am continually investing in myself. I am continuously learning, right? Whether it's reading, um, programs, um, learning, right? Like uh, watching videos. Like I am always diving deeper into the lineages that I'm already a part of right? So A Course in Miracles and yoga, thought systems, ancient wisdom, spiritual traditions, like all of that stuff, right? Passage meditation, all those things. But whatever I end up learning, because I do, I take it seriously. I take, I take uh, continuing education. That sounds so formal, right? But um, I love to learn. And as you can see, like, I have books and stuff, like, all over my house. I'm, and, and it's not just like, how many books can I gobble up? I really do like to read a book, think on it, contemplate it, highlight it, take notes, like, so that I can start to implement and integrate it. Because otherwise, then you're just parroting back, right? You're just like regurgitating back bullshit that you read, but you have no real experience with it yet. So, I, but these things that I take and learn is the reason why I'm telling you all this. So these things that I take and learn, I then get to share, like trickles down. I get to pass it down, <laughs> right? To those who are in the program who want those curated resources, that curated content, right? So it's like bonus. It's like extra bonuses. I get smarter, right? I always say like, oh, every day I wake up and it's like, oh, please have me go where you'd have me go. Have me do what you'd have me do. Have me say what you would have me be. Like have me, have me say what you would have me say and to whom? Like use me. I try to make myself available, not just to wisdom found in the books, but the divine intelligence that is available to all of us uh, and to me on any given day. The reason why I'm telling you all this is because I just signed up for this new, for lack of a better word, let's call it a program, this new program. And um, one of the things that I said, so this program has a hyperactive community and people are up in it and they are just like in the group and posting um, live videos and posting posts and asking questions and cheerleading each other and like doing all this stuff. And I was like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, I am here for the content. I am here to learn. And don't get me wrong, what I've allowed myself to do, I'm like, all right, you are allowed to like things. You are allowed to comment when you feel called to comment, but we are not getting the best cheerleader award in this program. Like, I'm not, I'm not even sure, I don't even think they have one, but you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm here for me. I'm here for me this time. Right. And I'm like, I don't need a bunch of attention. I don't need a bunch of hand holding. I'm here to just learn something about a very particular portion of the program. Um, Cause a lot of it is stuff I already teach and know, but I'm like, there's this little thing that just caught my curiosity and caught my attention. And I'm like fascinated. I want, I can't wait to learn more about this, but I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting, I'm not putting the kibosh on it. Right. It's like, but I am kind of like reining myself in. And I said, hey, you're going to go into this group, but you cannot pick up your pom-poms. You cannot pick up your pom-poms. And you know what pom-poms were originally meant to be used for? I mean, pom-poms, like the fuzzy pom-poms on a hat, right? Those have been around for like, Jesus Christ, a wicked, 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 wicked long time. But when I'm talking about pom-poms, like cheerleading pom-poms, they really only came onto the scene in like the 1930s and they were paper and they were like on sticks, but they would break down really easy. They weren't really that helpful. 
And then in like the 50s and the 60s is when they started making them like vinyl and plastic and shimmery to catch attention. And what pom-poms were meant to do, you guys, is to get this, is to raise spirits, to raise spirit, to catch the attention of the people in the crowd, to create excitement and shimmer and color, right? It's to raise spirit. Isn't that so fascinating that I became a spiritual mentor and I've been pom-poming the shit out of people like my whole life. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? So it's time for me to just kind of like, boop, I'm like in the program. I've said, welcome to the group to a few people, but I have shut the whole, like I have made the faucet into like a trickle because it needs to be right now. And I really just, I'm saying this because I want you to hear me, especially if you are a fellow creative, let's get some things clear. I'm not saying be a selfish asshole. I'm not saying stop feeding your kids, stop like, you know, participating in life, like da, 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 da. But what I am saying is we only have a certain amount of bandwidth, right? You have a certain number of hours. I mean, time and time and space is really an illusion, but I'm just saying like here, even though it's all an illusion, but here, like we literally have been taught, we've got 24 hours in a day. Let me put it that way. Sunrise, sunset, right? And then on the clock in the calendar, 24 hours. You only have so much time. You only have so much energy, right? I mean, I believe we can tap into a deeper well, but we all know what happens. If we're not creating time, if we're not putting time aside to take good care of yourself. If you're not drinking enough water, speaking of which, let me take a sip. <laughs> you're not drinking enough water. You're not getting enough sleep and rest enough time to like recover, especially if you're somebody who's athletic or uh, you work out or do yoga or go to the gym or lift weights or cross country or triathlon, whatever your thing is, right? If you're somebody who moves their body a lot. So we need time for exercise. We need time for good food, nutritious food. We need time for community and connection with others, right? Whether you're patented or not patented, right? Like if, if you lead a group, if you're a manager of a company, whatever the thing is, you know, but somewhere in there has to be you. So this isn't about becoming totally selfish, quote unquote, because I don't think it's selfish to take care of yourself and to put your attention on what needs your attention. And as a creative, and whether that means you are an artist, you're a poet, you're a writer, you're um, a dancer, a singer, a musician, uh, the thousands of ways that we're creative as human beings. And I believe that we're all creative. We might not all make our livings from it, but we've all been given an imagination. We've all been given creativity. But if you're somebody who tends to lean towards literally making your living in the creative arts, it is so important that you feed that, that you feed that, that you nurture and nourish that part of you. And if you're so focused on cheerleading everybody else, being a balcony person for everybody else and making time for everybody else, and that's one of the most important things. You know, I talk about um, in the nest, we have a module called the five D's of DSP, the five D's of daily spiritual practice. Uh, and the words are like daily dedication, determination, discipline, and devotion. Um, and, you know, those things are really important when it comes to um, consistently showing up for the relationship with the divine, however you define that, whether you call it God or source or universe or love or higher power or whatever, whatever it is, I, I don't never get hung up on the name, right? So um, that's wicked important. But also, you know, creating time for your creativity, because what you're doing in your creative time is you're co-creating with source. You're becoming the channel to receive your guidance, your inspiration, your intelligence, right? To create, to co-create with a thing that has been given to you you know, connecting with, again, whatever you call it, God's source, the muse, inspiration. I, again, don't get hung up on the words, but if you're not feeding that and nurturing and nourishing it, and you're giving away that really important time that could be spent on doing your thing because the world needs you, the world needs what you have to offer. And if you're so busy bolstering up, and like I said, and using your pom-poms for everybody else, 
a lot can go wrong there. Like I said, resentment, illness, martyrdom, rage, um, you know, depression, anxiety, when that creative energy and force is not being expressed, where do you think it goes? What do you think happens? And a lot of times people will use rah, 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 sis, boom, ba, cheerleading other people to distract themselves from taking their own work seriously, from taking themselves seriously. And, you know, and this is a, this is a, a, a um, episode for another day. But one of the things is I'm going to do a whole thing on, on having self-integrity or sometimes like self-integral or whatever you want to call it, keeping your commitment to yourself. Those five D's, right, of being dedicated, determined, disciplined, and devoted on the daily for yourself and what you're trying to bring into the world. So this is just kind of like me again. It's true. I mean, even this podcast is one of the ways that I cheerlead. I don't get paid for this shit. I pay to do this, right? This is a labor of love because I love you guys. And I do love helping and I do love sharing and I do love connecting and I do love building up, right? This is one of the things that I love to do. It's why I'm always, I start every show saying, oh my God, I'm wicked excited to be here because I am. And this is one of the ways that I get to do that. So I hope something that I shared today landed for you. Uh, something I always say that I shared from my hat landed in your hat and that you find it helpful in some way, but not just on the intellectual level. I hope that you hear it. I hope it goes into your head, right? Through your ears, <laughs> into your head, down into your hat, and then you implement it. You integrate it first, right? You integrate it and then you can implement it and you put it to use, you put it to work from the head to the heart to the hands, out into the world, that you actually, you know, like heed, heed what I'm saying, contemplate it. And I always say, take what works, leave the rest. Take what's true for you, put it into action. If it's helpful, amazing. Leave it. I'm not your mother, I'm not your boss, I'm not your babysitter. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm inviting you into the awareness of, hmm, maybe it's time for me to put my pom-poms down too for a little while. Not saying we're retiring them, not saying you're not going to pick them up still once in a while. It doesn't mean you get stingy with your love, but it is about not, um, not just raising other people's spirit, cheerleading yourself, re recycling some of that. You know, when I get that urge to like, oh, I'm like, oh, maybe I could just kind of funnel that back into my own project, into my book. You know, and the other day it was so funny because. Uh, somebody who's in another program that I'm in, I'm in a membership on memberships. And uh, somebody said something nice to me. Uh, they sent me a DM and I wrote back and I just said, thank you so much for your support. That's so kind of you, like whatever I said. And they said, of course, of course, I'm so happy to do it, especially since you're always so supportive of others. And I was like, oh, there it is again. And like I said, it's lovely to hear. But I think what my spiritual team has been trying to get through my thick head, my thick knucklehead <laughs> is like, look, it's, it's wonderful. It's beautiful to have a generous heart. It's beautiful to want to give to others, but you can't not also give to yourself because here's what I know. It's in giving that we receive but it's also through giving to ourselves that we receive, that we value our own value. We value our own time. We value our own artistry and our own craft. And I do, and I believe in this book. I believe in this book and I can't wait for it to get out into the world in the next couple of years, because that's, you know, that's how it works too. Everybody's like, when's your book coming out? I'm like, first of all, got to finish it. But then there's that whole process. You know, it's called the public, the pub publishing process. It takes a couple of years once a book even gets picked up, but I'm hot at work on it because I want to get it done. So I hope you guys that this is, this has helped you in some way. Um, you know, you can still like people, you can like their stuff, you can support their stuff, but also pay attention. Here's the last thing I'm going to say about this. Pay attention to the relationships, the groups that you're in, the people in your life. Where if you're always the one who is reaching out first, cheerleading, bolstering, supporting, 
And like one of the, like one of the things is is if you realize like, well, if I never reach out to them, I would probably never hear from them. If I wasn't the one with my love, with, with the buoyancy of my attention, time and love, if, if the relationship would drown, if I stopped swimming for both of us and dog paddling for both of us, these are things to really take a look at. Who else in your life are you being held up with by the buoyancy of their love? Because one of the things that happens with pom-pom happy people, pomerific people, is a lot of times givers surround themselves, just naturally takers. So once in a while, it's good to take a look. And that's the other thing around my birthday. Like whenever I get a clean slate, you can bet your sweet ass, I take a look around at my life and I'm like, what am I keeping and what am I getting rid of? What do I want more of? What do I want less of? How is it going to look now moving into my 53rd year? Because here's what I know to be true. I got less years in front of me than I do behind me. And I don't have time to waste. (laughs) I don't have time to waste on friendships or relationships or anything, projects, uh, programs, whatever that do not feel life-giving. I'm not saying they always have to be easy and people have to be perfect. And I'm not saying any of that. But if I start to recognize that there's an imbalance, I will just slowly, I can moonwalk out, right? I mean, that's one of the things, again, it's like, I, I don't do that Cirque du Soleil stuff anymore. I have learned to value myself and love myself and know my own worth and value. So I'm not really interested in relationships where it feels really imbalanced, not really interested in feeling like I'm constantly the one who has to give or recognize or notice or pay attention or support. That's not that interesting to me anymore. You know, my friend, Bill Barron and I, we talk about it. Uh, It comes from the show Billions. I don't know if you guys have ever watched that and we'll we'll end on this note. I I should just do a whole episode on what it means to be a Wilbury, but we kind of like to have Wilburys in our life. <laughs> Go check out that reference, Google it, watch that scene, and you'll know what I'm talking about. So, you guys, thank you so much for being here today. Now's a great time, especially as we're coming up. The new year will be here before you know it. I can't even believe that 2022 is around the corner as we're here in October. Um, it's going to be here before you know it. And so, start to assess with this last quarter of the year, start to take a look around and just be thinking, like, what have I been putting up with that I don't want to do anymore? How have I been showing up for myself? How have I been showing up in the world? And what is, what, what, like, where has my pom-pom shaking been maybe a little lax or maybe a little more too much? This is not about tit for tatting. Let me be clear on that. This is not about tit for tatting because there are always going to be times, especially in long-term relationships and marriages where things will be like, somebody's a little more present because there's a project going on. I mean, and I mean, I'm married to a fellow creative, right? I'm married to a professional musician. So I'm lucky that we give each other a lot of room for our creativity. And, and I can just say, Hey, sorry, I can't hang out and watch TV or do whatever, because I need to go write. And he can say to me, Hey, I'm working on an album or I have a piece or I have some songs I need to do. And I'm like, okay, because we, we know, I know that my sweetie, his Dharma is to create music, to write songs, to, to perform on stages, to tour around the world. Like I get it. And I've even said to him, you know, if you ever get called out, like, let's just say a really big musician, um, you know, think of whoever you love, right. Call him out on tour. And he's like, and I have to be gone for like six months. I'd be like, you gotta go. I know he loves me. I know he loves the uh, furry kids. I know he loves being home, but it's like, you know, we have callings bigger And I think we all do. And for some people, their calling is to be at home and be a stay-at-home mom and like be a stay-at-home dad, whatever the thing is. I'm not telling people, but what I'm saying is we've got to value our own value. We've got to value our own creativity and our own craft and our own businesses and whatever we're trying to create in the world. It's really important. So we can't always just be pouring into other people. So I'm not saying retire your pom-poms, but sometimes we got to put them down. Sometimes we just got to put the pom-poms in the closet for a little while. (laughs) Or take the pom-poms out for like 10 minutes a day and go crazy. That's one of the things I'd say to myself. You got 10 minutes to go crazy. Go online, like a bunch of stuff, share a bunch of stuff, cheerlead, whatever. But then you got to back the fuck out. Like you got to ease back off the gas pedal. Okay, okay. So you guys, again, I hope this is helpful. I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for listening to the show. I always love to hear from you guys. 
love to hear from you guys. So um, you can always just send me a DM. You can share on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you hang out or whatever, but tag me. I would say, please tag me so that I can say thank you. And you can also help me by going to Apple Podcasts, hitting the follow button, uh, and then leaving a review. Obviously a friendly review, right? <laughs> if, I, mean, I figure if you're listening, if you're listening to me right now, you listen to this whole show, I'm assuming it's because you got something out of it. Because if it sucked, hopefully you would have stopped like 20, 20 minutes ago, right? So please do that. And you guys, I'm also playing with an interesting idea of maybe adding some downloadable PDFs uh, in relationship to some of the episodes, like not every episode is going to be like a super duper, uh, like learning uh, or teaching episode, but I got a fun idea. I'm going to play around with it. But if that's something that you might be interested in, um, a little like PDF for an episode, like uh, to fill out, or if there's, you know, key concepts or something that I'm sharing, I think that could be super fun. So I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, and I guess that's it really. Um, I, I, I feel like whenever you listen to the show and I see the download numbers or whatever, I feel like you guys are cheerleading me on. So thank you so much for that. Uh, wherever you go, may you leave the people and the place and the animals and the environment better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Bye. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. -E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review. Because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.